Hello and welcome to the Winnie Agenda's coverage of a Theros Beyond, Draf- Beyond Death traditional draft. My name is Jesse Marshall and I'm here with match number three in this draft with our nice red-white deck. So we've got one of our bombs. We've got this and Ox of Agonis. Um, we'll keep this because we've got a two, a removal spell to clear a blocker, and then we've got a nice five. Um, so we'll keep that. Hopefully we draw another target for the Elspeth Conquers Death in the meantime in terms of the returning a creature to play. Uh, here is the Revel is a nice one. But yes, the more that we can do, the better. Uh, thankfully, this can't be Elspeth's Tormented. Just one of the advantages of it. Uh, but that can certainly be Omen of the Forged, which it swiftly will be. Elspeth's Torment, one of my favourite cards in this format, but thankfully our deck quite resistant to it in general. Okay, so the goat gets in, which makes me think we might see some little uh, Skofos Minotaur fellow that sacrifices for three coming out sometime soon. But yeah, I guess both the Swamps and the Elspeth's Torment card sleeves, obviously reminding us of the existence of <laughs> Elspeth's Torment along the way. But hopefully the saga of conquering death can indeed come true here. Okay. Uh, a little annoying if that actually triggers, but we've got a pretty sweet curve out here, so we'll just enjoy that as best we can. Knowing that if our creatures get destroyed, as opposed to exiled, um, we can get at least one of them back with Elspeth Conquer's death. And Omen of the Forge, I mean, this is the sort of curve out where you're really grateful to have that when you're on the play. Just, you get to remove a creature and later on smooth out your draws once you're in the position where drawing a land off the top can severely impact on your ability to keep the pressure up. So a little Timoret, exiling cards in graveyards, not something we particularly want to see, given our escape and our rare. It looks like our escape card's going to probably die anyway. Uh, so do we play Heroes of the Revel or do we play Furious Rise? I think it partly depends on what happens here. So we'll see if we get blocked. Okay, it looks like we are getting blocked. Okay. So, no capacity to do much about that other than to trade. Which also means that we don't get our Heroes the Revel this turn. But I think it's worthwhile. Oh, it's indestructible. No! Can we do that? Oh, no. I forgot that it gave indestructible. I thought it only gave Hexproof. Rip. Fare thee well tempo. Uh, well, that is a mistake that you get from not reading cards properly. Um, I think that I probably haven't encountered that before because most of the time when people play that it's to deflect a removal spell. So the indestructible part does not matter so much. Anyway, that was an error, but thankfully not one that cost us completely since we still got to play Furious Rise, but it would have been nice to have a 4-4 on the board, that's for sure. Uh, and we would have been able to play the Furious Rise and the Rage Hound this turn, which would have been a much better use of our curve. So the Rage Hound's probably going to die. Or get exiled, I should say, because die actually has a specific meaning in the rules these days. I wonder what our opponent is sandbagging here. It is a triumphant surge. Okay. Hmm. It's annoying that we can't get rid of this Timurit because its ability to get rid of the cards in our bin is just so annoying, given that we want to Elspeth conquer Elspeth conquers death something. Um hmm. 
I still think we have to probably kill the Nightmare Shepherd, even though that gives away what we're doing and means that our Heroes of the Rebel and our Maze Warden are probably going to die um, or go away from the bin. But there's a part of me that kind of goes, maybe we just take a hit from this this turn in order to try and power this up. Like, if we can find a removal spell off the Omen of the Forge here, of which we have several, uh, then that means that we can do that. So, that's good. We've got a Fateful End that, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to draw next turn. So now, the second part of our plan requires our opponent to tap out again next turn without exiling things from our bin. The fact that we now have another Rage Hound on the board probably makes it less likely that they're going to tap out because they're going to want to start exiling things from the bin just in anticipation of this dying. But we've got to give it a go because this is, I think, our best chance to get back in the game. Part of the problem for us here, though, is that Fateful End in and of itself is not going to kill Timurat whilst Nightmare Shepard is on the board. So our sequencing is getting extremely awkward. Hmm. I think we'll just have to attack here. Well, I mean, we do have to attack. <laughs> it's an attack stage journey fable. Uh, and we'll just see what happens with the Timurat. Probably could have actually killed it there before damage in order to stop our opponent from being able to exile the Rage Hound. That was a, quite the error. Ooh, okay. That is also very bad news. But errors that we should be avoiding here, to be honest. Um, okay. Hmm, this is uh, an unfortunate counterplay that we've <laughs> run into with Timurat. Mm. Well, at least we can start triggering Furious Rise, but with that in mind, I think now that we have something else to play for with Furious Rise, I think we've just got to kill this and hope that we don't die next turn. I hope this doesn't get flickered. Nope. Oh, it got flickered, so we're dead. All right, so we're dealing with multiple flickers, which is going to play havoc with our spot removal, but it's also something that we can be aware of. So we're bringing the Liar, um, Portent of Betrayal, no good, but our own tricks are better, um, if they're planning on flickering their own stuff, um, to an extent, uh, as well as with Karametra's Blessing in their deck, um, the more that we can be doing at instant speed that they can't quite so easily counter, the better. Uh, keeping in mind that they can flicker our stuff as well, but I think, I mean, this may come out again, but I think at this point, it might be okay to bring it in. This not so good against their larger blockers um, and their ability to remove things from the bin. Um, yeah, so... Attackers with larger toughness are going to be f more favourable in this sort of matchup. Um, this seems okay. Might be the matchup where we want Thrill of Possibility a little more over some of our other things, which just might not land. But no, I think if we just go with that straight swap of the Rage Hound for the Liar, that's probably, to be honest, where we should be starting most matches, actually, because I think the Liar is just better than the third Rage Hound. Um, I 
I just don't think we have enough sack outlets to make Port End of Betrayal worthwhile. If we had one more, I might consider it, but we just do not have enough. Uh, yeah, let's just go with that and see how we go. So we'll play again. Ooh, it's a little nasty. Very nasty on the play. Uh, it's a little better, except we can't play our two drop at the moment. But we'll keep it and we'll dump the third planes. Mm. It's a reasonably bad matchup for us here, I think. Not just in terms of the cards getting exiled from our graveyard, but also just the efficiency of our opponent's creatures. Um, so at least we've got the Revoke Existence for the Timur at this time. Uh. Okay, so Omen of the Sun is something we're going to have to be aware of with our Rage Hounds as well, because that's obviously terrible for them. Um, I think let's go with this and just put Sentinel Eyes on it for now. Just for mana efficiency, given that we may want to play the Scofoss Mage Warden next turn. If we draw a land. Hmm. Well, at least we can attack through that. This will not be able to attack through it, but at least it incentivizes um, our opponent not to attack us. Obviously, depending on whether they have another blocker to deploy, which presumably they do, with six cards in hand. Yeah, White Black's a pretty sweet place to be in this format. You should get so much removal, and if you can pick up something like a Nightmare Shepherd and a couple of threats, which is what I think Black might be lacking a little more as soon as it finishes, then you are in a pretty sweet spot. And White just has obviously a lot of different, a lot of depth and a lot of different strategies that it can go to, go wide with its commons or um, lean into sort of larger creatures if you pick up things like Sunmade Pegasus as well. Um, yeah. So interesting to see what they've got here. Removal or another threat. Looks like I'm... Okay, yeah, they're deciding which of our threats to remove. Fair enough. The other thing about being short on sack outlets is that you lose the ability to get around Dreadful Apathy, which is a bit annoying. Like in that first game when we had to torch our own ox to stop it getting exiled. I would presume they were tossing up getting rid of the Rage Hound because they were not sure whether they had another way to exile it. Uh, and pres I'm presuming that the decision to use the Dreadful Apathy either means that they want to flicker of fate their Dreadful Apathy next turn. Which is going to be very annoying because that is a frustratingly powerful combo at common. Um... Or they don't really care about the Rage Hound and they're going to find another way to exile it. But yeah, once I see this come down and I know they've got two Flicker of Fates in their deck, I start to get pretty concerned when my deck sort of relies on just sending in the Dorks. Because of that, this is the sort of matchup where I either want to be triggering Furious Rise pretty quickly, um, but also where it might be worth bringing in that Thriller possibility. Partly for 
for this reason. Um, all right, let's lose our Rage Hound, unfortunately. We might be able to trade with the Archon if they block, we'll see if they offer it. No, they're just going to kill the Rage Hound. Fair enough, I would too. At least we'll dome them for six, which sort of puts us in some kind of range where we might be able to do some damage later. And we'll get Rage Hound number two. So they're obviously not wanting to activate the Dreadful Apathy for two reasons. One is that they want to get off their um, Flicker of Fate combo, and the other is that they don't want to give us the Sentinel Eyes. Um, so I think that was probably behind their decision to play out the Archon instead that turn. So what are they going to get back if that dies? They're going to back Omen of the Sun. Pretty annoying. So it looks like the Dreadful Apathy combo is going off. I do kind of wonder whether they intended that combo to exist at Common. Whether that was sufficiently playtested. Because it is pretty powerful. Like, Flicker of Fate's already a pretty good card in the format since it can target yours or your opponents and it targets creatures and enchantments. Um, but being able to turn Dreadful Apathy into a reusable removal spell is pretty strong. Like, yeah, it's slightly risky and it can be got around with sack outlets, but and it takes a few turns and it's reasonably mana intensive, but it's still very, very powerful. Okay. So we're probably dead here. Yep. No capacity to really do much about that. So just overpowered, I think, by the quality of their removal. Um, Mulligan in the second game didn't help. Uh, but yeah, I mean, their removal and their capacity to keep us off Furious Rise in the first game just meant that we could never really get going. Um, and the fact that we couldn't remove the Timurat in time to uh, salvage our cards in the graveyard meant that our sort of plan of using Elspeth Conquer's death just didn't really work out. So anyway, there's our first defeat for the tournament. Uh, let's hope that we can...